President Arvello, Vice President Diane Chin. I would like to welcome you on the behalf of the microeconomics class at Great Bay Community College, Fall 2011, to our class presentation of our feasibility study of alternative energy. What we will be covering in this presentation is an analysis of the current cost and usage of Great Bay Community College energy, what is Great Bay Community College current mission statement on alternative energy, how could we integrate a study of alternative energy into Great Bay Community College programs? What alternative energies are available to GBCC? What are the pros and cons of several types of alternative energies? What externalities do we create with current energy usage versus alternative choices? And finally, does the alternative energy project that we have here on campus benefit Great Bay Community College? So we'll be addressing all of these issues, and we will begin with how it all started. Can, before we get, can, uh, how does this uh, project fall into the overall scheme of things in this in this course? I mean, is this in uh, microeconomics? Two of the major topics that we cover are production costs and positive and negative externalities. Externalities are things that happen in the marketplace that are good or bad, they could be positive externalities or negative externalities, and we'll look at all of them, that are outside of the market transaction. If, for example, I am a maker of electricity, and you are a consumer of electricity, mm -hmm. there is a direct relationship mm -hmm. between the two of us. I'm the seller, you're the buyer. Mm -hmm. The production of electricity and determining, depending on the source that I use to produce the energy, could have effects on people outside of the seller-buyer transaction. Mm -hmm. There are other constituents involved, stakeholders. There are other people who live nearby. There are people who work in the organization. There are, there's the entire community to consider. And so okay. that's what we look at, and that's two major components in the course. And so this seemed to be a fit when John and Clay came to the college, <laughs> John Spencer and Clay Mitchell came to the college um, and offered their, their expertise to a class. That's the first thing I thought of. Production costs here in, the, in, the, in micro and negative and positive externalities due to pollution and different things yeah. in the environment. Yeah. Good. So and, and this is just this is an oral presentation. Yes, please. And the only one in the course, or you have done several of these already? This is just this. One, the one, the one oral. Yes. Okay. This is it, just one. Okay. <laughs> one big one. So yeah, one, one big, big one. one. There are a lot of butterflies in the, and stomach butterflies in the room there. I think so, and now including mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have to present for her in macro as well. So we all. Yeah. Oh, so you're you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So all have to She have forces to all of her business classes to do yes. presentations. And if we're lucky enough to intro, we're going to focus on okay. the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, how it all got started. In 2011, the Community College System of New Hampshire was awarded a $1.3 million grant through the State Energy Program. This grant was used to address energy usage issues as well as reduce long-term energy costs. Of the $1.3 billion million, Great Bay Community College received 75,000 of it. With the $75,000, Great Bay partnered with Revolution Energy to assess how Great Bay can reduce its carbon footprint. Revolution Energy installed 25 panels on the rooftop above the library. Before the rooftop was an empty space, now it has an economic impact, helping to reduce Great Bay's energy bill. You have the inverter box. The electricity comes in as a DC current, but in order for Great Bay to be able to utilize the electricity, we'll, need, we'll, be able, we'll need it in an AC current, and this convertible, inverter box helps us do that. Current energy expenses and uses of Great Bay Community College. This is the chart of the energy costs, and we um, ended up doing July through November because this is the project started in July, mm -hmm. so we only wanted to compare kind of apples to apples, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and our fiscal year goes from July 1st to June 30th. In July, August, and September of the fiscal year 2011, there was an issue with the cooling unit, 
So the numbers are skewed. Um, you can see that they're a little bit higher in the blue. Um, due to the cooling unit issue, there was more energy used, which caused um, the cost to rise. Um, here's the energy usage. And again, we did the July through November, just like previously. Um, and you can see that GPCC uses a lot of power. We use hundreds of thousands of kilowatt hours every month. And due to our energy use here at the college, it is essential that we save as much as possible. And now we're going to look at our mission statement. For this project, initially we wanted to find the school's current Going Green mission statement. And when we didn't find one, we decided to come up with some ideas that might be useful in creating one. These ideas included, we at Great Bay Community College endeavor to make a positive impact on our environment. We commit ourselves to the adoption of cost-saving measures to minimize environmental impact. We seek to educate our students on environmental responsibility, and we resolve to become a model for environmental stewardship within the New Hampshire Community College system. And now on to integrated study of alternative energy. Currently, Great Bay Community College does not have any energy efficiency courses. Lake Region Community College has 17 courses, and since their school draws most of their students from Concord, Great Bay can start their own program without taking away Lake Region students. Currently, there are 13,000 alternative jobs in, NA in New Hampshire. A nationwide study says there could potentially be 8,000 more jobs statewide if programs were to be created. If, in 2008, New Hampshire put more investments in alternative energy jobs, which produces goods and services with environmental impact, it could have brought unemployment down from 3.8% to 2.8%, a 1% decrease. Such alternative energy jobs include LEED cert certification architect, residential sales representative, process engineer, and more. Most of these jobs require bachelor's degrees. The Energy Efficiency Training Program is designed around the New Hampshire Climate Action Plan developed by the Department of Environmental Services. Their plan is to help create more energy efficient jobs, lower home energy bills, improve occupant comfort and building durability, and create a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. A couple of examples of classes that Lake Region Community College offers are energy con conservation tech techniques, which teaches how buildings consume energy and how their buildings perform against one another. Another class is re uh, Renewable Energy Source, where the students are educated about different types of alternative energy options. This class also explores the government regulation on the use of renewable energy. And the final example is Lighting and Energy Economics, which teaches about the cost of, um, of choosing alternative energy and the different finance and financing options for alternative methods. These classes could be marketed to maintenance and to human resources departments at large corporations that are get dedicated to going green. Now for different types of alternative energy. <laughs> What we're going to be presenting right now are some of the types of alternative energy that are available. Solar electric energy, also known as photovoltaic systems, convert sunlight into energy. Because of their modularity, PV systems can be designed to meet any electrical requirement no matter how large or small. Solar thermal energy is a technology for harnessing solar energy for thermal energy, which is heat. Low temperature collectors are flat plates that are used to heat swimming pools. Mid temperature collectors are, are usually flat plates but are used to heat water and air in residential and commercial uses. High temperature collectors concentrate sunlight using mirrors and lenses and are generally used for electric power production. Did I go too fast? <laughs> Computer, 
Um, other types of alternative energy are wind, which are small wind turbines, and electric generators that utilize wind energy to produce clean emissions-free power for individual homes, farms, and small businesses. With the drop in prices of production, wind has become a serious and important component of utility generation. Hydro is power that is generated by using electricity generators to extract energy from moving water. Um, geothermal is another source of energy and it uses the Earth's natural stored energy to pump uh, warm air during the summer or warm air during the winter months and in the summer it changes the cool air to cool it down. Uh, biomass um, is uh, defined as any organic material that can be burned and used as a source of fuel. Um, it is renewable. The most common would be wood. And then our next slide is going to be on the pros and cons of these alternative energies. Hydro energy is simply an energy that is taken. <laughs> Hydro energy is the energy that is taken from water and, co and converted to electricity. Hydro energy can be obtained by using many methods of capture, and the most common method of, of energy from water is hydroelectric dam, where water is coming down from an area, causes the turbines to rotate, and the energy is captured to run the generator. And power can also be obtained by using the energy of tidal waves or power, uh, water power. This type of energy was not feasible for our college because there are no large bodies of water available nearby. Wind power is an important part of a strategy to combat global warming. Wind power is currently the most economical competitive form of renewable energy. It provides nearly 15,000 megawatts of power in the United States, enough power for more than 3 <clears throat> million households, and can provide up to 20% of the country's electricity needs. Every megawatt hour produced by wind energy avoids an average of 1,220 pounds of carbon dioxide emissions. If the United States obtains 20% of its electricity from wind, powered by 2020, it will reduce global warming emissions equivalent to taking 71 million cars off the road or planting 104 acres of trees. Expanding wind power instead of fossil fuels also avoids the wildlife and human health impacts of oil, gas, drilling, coal mining, and fossil fuel burning. The windmill is about 120 feet tall, and it was not feasible for Great Bay because the airport in right next door. <clears throat> solar energy is used for generating electricity. Solar cells. Solar cell is a semiconductor for converting light to an electric current. Because the electrical currents from solar cells are small, in order for enough energy to be converted, solar panels must be used. You need a large panel to collect a large amount of light, and you usually see them placed on rooftops or in fields. Uh, if more energy is collected than is used, the surplus energy goes back to the grid for a credit. Here at Great Bay, placing solar panels on the roof would utilize this unused space. Upfront cost, normally this is a con, but in our case a deal was made with Revolution Energy to offset this. Snow removal and cleaning of the panels will require some periodic maintenance. And now, externalities of alternative, alternative energy. The first the uh, thing we're going to go over is coal. A few positive externalities of coal are, um, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, more than a quarter of the Earth's uh, recoverable coal resources are in the United States. According to the same source, coal costs about one-third less than other alternative fuels. Um, the National Mining Association reports that the U.S. has enough coal to support demand for approximately 200 years. Some negative externalities of coal include 
that coal is the number one source of man-made sulfur dioxide pollution, according to the Tennessee Valley, Valley Authority. Dangerous coal mining methods can result in black lung, explosions, fatal accidents, gas poisoning, and more. Mining affects wildlife, trees, and plants through fumes, pollution, acid rain, dangerous, and loud equipment. And finally, some negative effects on the community includes making people with existing respiratory issues more ill, creating new respiratory problems for residents, and loud equipment, loud equipment which can disturb the peace. Wind power, positive externalities. Wind power is not harmful to wildlife. More bats and birds are killed by cars, power lines, high-rise buildings, on average, than by wind turbines. No toxins or pollutants. Wind power is a clean source of renewable energy, produces no air or water pollutants. The biggest positive, positive externality is it produces electricity. When the biggest wind turbines generate enough electricity for 600 homes. A backyard turbine can produce enough electricity for a single home or even a small business. Wind power, wind power won't deplete natural resources. As long as we have sun we have, and we will have wind. Wind is free and operational costs are minimal once turbines are erected. Negatives. The wind, wind turbines can be damaged by bad weather. Low temperatures can impact the physical properties of materials. Snow can clog openings that are meant for airflow and cause harmful, uh, can cause damage to electrical parts. Possible interference with cable connections. According to the Alternative Energy Resource website, uh, some research has been done that says turbines interfere with television, uh, telephone, and radio signals. Turbines may shed ice, also um, causing there to be some safety hazard to people and uh, the equipment around them. Omitted from the slide, but probably the biggest uh, negative externality is the initial startup costs. They can be quite high and take several years to recoup. Okay, and now the externalities of solar power. Um, one of the positive externalities is that little maintenance is required for the solar panels um, because there are no moving parts. It's a very minimal amount of maintenance that's required. And also governments will often offer tax credits um, when you're installing the solar panels. And probably one of the biggest positive externalities of the solar panels is that they don't generate any pollution uh, during operation. So the primary environmental health and safety issues involve how they are manufactured, installed, and ultimately disposed of. Energy is required to manufacture and install the solar components, and any fossil fuels used for this purpose will generate emissions. So an important question is how much fossil fuel energy input is um, required for solar systems compared to the fossil energy consumed by comparable conventional energy systems. So although this varies um, depending upon the technology and the climate, the energy balance is generally favorable to solar systems in situations where they are cost effective. And efficiency is constantly improving as we develop new technologies in this area. Uh, some of the negative externalities of solar panels, there's some concern that with the production of um, photovoltaic devices, um, the production of the panels can involve the use of some hazardous materials, such as toxic and explosive gases, corrosive liquids, and suspected uh, carcinogenic compounds. According to the California Energy Commission's Public Interest Energy Research Program, an accidental release of such manufacturing chemicals could result in humans and surrounding wildlife to ingest these compounds through contaminated water, soil, or air. And ingestion could then lead to a variety of impacts on organisms, including impaired reproduction, increased mortality, and reduced growth. However, the severity of these effects um, vary greatly depending on the amount and the type of the chemical that is being released into the atmosphere. And it's generally believed that through effective regulation, these dangers can be kept at a very minimal level. And now we will look at how alternative energy benefits Great Bay Community College. Um, this is a graph of the projected annual savings um, per GBC's power purchase agreement with Revolution Energy. We are paying 14 cents a kilowatt hour or approximately $4,000 annually for the first nine years. After nine years, um, GBCC owns the panels and our contract ends with Revolution Energy, which is why you see a huge spike at year nine. This is why um, 
afterwards, excuse me, um, the costs are next to nothing for use of the solar panels. We factored in one cent per kilowatt hour due to the cost of maintaining the solar panels. Um, this is a graph of the projected cumulative savings. According to the Department of Energy and OEP historical data, there is a 3% increase on energy costs, and this could increase um, even more, which means that GBCC would save even more. Um, GBC has the potential to save over $100,000 over the life of the panels, and that's based at the one cent per kilowatt. Um, this could help keep the tuition costs down over the lifetime of the panels. Okay, according to the New Hampshire Office of Energy and Planning, in 2008, New Hampshire citizens, businesses, and industry spent over $6 billion a year in energy. Of that $6 billion, $4.1 billion, or 68%, leaves the state immediately to pay for imported fossil and nuclear fuels. Depending on the velocity of money, this $4.1 billion could be as much as $10 billion. This outflow of money represents 7% of New Hampshire's gross domestic product that is immediately gone. Great Bay Community College is helping to restore some portion of that 7% to help boost the New Hampshire gross domestic product. And as you can see, in 2008, our total energy expenditures, we spent 26% on electricity. Not only will Great Bay help New Hampshire's gross domestic product, but the New Hampshire environment as well. Great Bay is helping reduce, reduce reducing its carbon footprint by 27,900 kilowatt hours per year, as well as reducing Great Bay's carbon footprint, the solar panels demonstrate to the community that we are aware of the impact we have on the environment. As Great Bay moves towards a more sustainable practice, new courses can open up and we can tap into an untapped job market of clean jobs and acquire a whole new audience. To sum up how our group feels, I would like to now close with a quote from Students for Solar Schools, an organization set to equip schools with solar panels. Adam Rondas, a student who heads up the organization, states, this group sees solar panels not so much as the end goal of their efforts, but as a symbol for environmental conservation, the beginning of a greater focus on efficiency improvement at schools, and to generate publicly publicity regarding the importance of school sustainability. Thank you. Thank you. Well, class, thank you very much. Do you have any did, questions? First of all, I'd just like to say you guys did great research. Great research. Well, all I can say is thank God we chose solar energy. <laughs> 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 I hate to be sitting here thinking we made the wrong decision. <laughs> well, I guess my, my, um, my, it's just the top of the top of my head, a question about how, in, in terms of macroeconomically, how does, how do you guys see this, um, Kind of moving forward, and do you see this as a positive? Do you see this as a negative? Both for New Hampshire, the country, the world. Um, I guess that's I guess that's uh, kind of the one question I have. In terms of solar energy in general. Well, in, ter in terms of uh, uh, alternative energy, generally speaking, I mean, is it your opinion from from your re the research you did that uh, we need to continue to move? in this direction, or? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And uh, for the resources that are available to us in this country, I, you know, we're, we're far behind other countries and the steps that some other countries are making um, towards using alternative energy. So I think it's, especially in this country, it's important for us to keep moving forward in this direction and keep educating ourselves on the different options that we have. And do you have any assessment as to why we're so far behind? Because we, I don't know, I, for me, I believe that Americans don't take a look at how to grow our nation. We want our consumption expenditures, we want our shampoo and socks and all that stuff and airplanes, but if we really, and shoot, and shoot. <laughs> and, if we really take a look, take a step back and invest in infrastructure instead of making shampoo, but as most Americans, we don't understand what kind of impacts that'll have to us in the future. 
We're not yeah, but, it's a, but that's an interesting question because you as students um, are, are well aware of some of these issues that are going on in this country and how the rest of the country is kind of, or the rest of the world kind of moving ahead of us mm -hmm. on many things. And, and yet we're stuck in, uh, in an old way of thinking, which ultimately is not good for the nation. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that there are a lot of people in this country that are well aware of some of these issues, yet we're not moving forward. And that, that's the, the, the kind of the interesting dichotomy I, I think there's a lot of companies, people, we're more focused on the bottom line than on those externalities. You know, it's, uh, we're more focused on the short term. The short term, the bottom it's, line, it's, changing it's, over. But I, I believe that as you see the cost of, of oil and, and the power from the electric companies continue to rise and the, uh, the advances in the alternatives that, um, that, that you're seeing every day, and the costs are lowered, you're going to start to see, I believe you're going to start seeing a lot more people go, oh, well now it makes, not only does it make sense uh, environmentally, but it's making sense economically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to get their attention, hit them right in the pocketbook. Yeah. <laughs> and it has to be done on such a massive scale that I think uh, uh, in situations like this, in the past, government has stepped in and created incentives not just for companies, but for individuals as well in, in May. And I know that states uh, have tried to do some of that with tax credits and so forth. Um, but I, I think we're, we're in such a bad economic situation now that I mean, the, those kinds of incentives have been kind of depleted or taken away. And mm -hmm. yeah. Hopefully they'll resume once the economy begins to pick up again. Because We did have residential incentives here in the state of New Hampshire, but our recent um, budget cycle Right. They were limited. Yeah. 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 Also, I think it's an issue with the mindset of the people. You know, for past generations, we've just grown accustomed to this idea that our current energy usage, it's just, it will always be there. Yeah. You know, and, and now people are starting to be aware these are not renewable resources, yeah. and there's going to be an end to our current energy. And then there's a price to pay for it. Exactly. You know, you know somewhere, if we're, uh, if we don't have oil, well, we do have oil, but we, need, we, we use a lot more than what we have, or what we take out of the ground. And we have to depend on other countries to supply it. There's a cost to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there are wars, there are, there's, there's just oh, uh, you know, politics that are involved. And, uh, so it's, um, all of this is quite interesting. I think more people like the idea of alternative en energy and like, like other people to do it. But they don't want to change themselves. Yeah. I think until we are actually forced to change, it's not going to happen. It's not going to fully happen. Yeah. Well, so I, until we hit some crisis, right? Exactly. Yeah. I asked Clay and John just as when um, they were here when we first started for a residential home to get started up with solar panels to produce what they would need. They would, they said it was about twenty thousand dollars with the panels installed. Mm -hmm. Now who has twenty thousand dollars to throw yeah. into panels? Right. And especially right now where the economy is so terrible and so many people are out of work. Right. But even when that, if the economy does pick up, back up, if the, co the upfront cost there is just so large that I think that's what also makes it difficult. That's a big deterrent for a lot of people. Yeah. But they do have a plan. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure other companies and. Uh, Revolution, they did have a plan to do a similar program that was done here on a residential scale, which I was very interested in personally. Mm -hmm. But then there were some tax benefits that got killed, yeah. which yeah. killed that program. Yeah. So, hope, you know, someday, you know, as, as oil or electric electricity from the company rises yeah. and those advancements come down and some tax credits get in there and they can do programs like this one on a residential scale, I, I would do it. Yes, so absolutely. I see, yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, so at some point, like you said, the, the, the uh, cost of producing, of production mm -hmm. will continue to go down and the products will continue to improve. So at some point, hopefully, it'll be at a point where we can all afford to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Somebody yeah. offers to lease the equipment for ten years, where you're paying four thousand dollars a year instead of an upfront twenty thousand dollar cost. Mm -hmm. 
so I'm going to get that. You know, mm -hmm. Then you'll start seeing, I, I believe you'll start seeing solar panels and people's rooms everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because why wouldn't it? It saves you money. Mm -hmm. And you get that nice feeling that you don't something. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think you're probably less vulnerable to all these outages and, you know, that are related to weather and, and so right. on. Uh, how, how many of you, let me ask this question, how many of you believe that uh, in global warming, first of all, and, and, and if global warming is caused by man-made uh, carbon pollution? Believe that that's the cause yeah. of it? It has to be. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that, 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 oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 I work in truth and fact. You know, there's a story I tell people all the time when they ask that question. And I grew up in Vermont, and 20 some odd years ago as a teenager, I used to go deer hunting with my grandfather. Deer hunt season always starts on the second Saturday in November. And there was always one or two feet of snow on the ground. And we're on, what, December 7th right now? Yeah. Eight. So there's something going on. 65 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's something going on, because uh, I know that the three of the hottest Novembers in, uh, in, the, in the history. I mean, it have happened in the year in this decade. So, so, Something. so something's gone. <laughs> yeah. Whether it's man-made or not, it's, a, it's another question. But uh, scary nonetheless, because we're all going to have to move to higher ground at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you would be asking about programs here at the. I thought you'd be interested in the section on programs that we could integrate. Oh, yeah, yeah. and actually uh, part, part of the reason uh, why we have, we brought, we, we did the, the panel program was uh, to use it, one, as a demonstration project for other organizations or companies that may want to do it and want to come here and visit. And so we're going to have a monitor to, in the lobby that will tell people how much power is being generated and how much we're using and that type of thing. Um, I hope Revolution Energy is uh, reimbursing us for uh, that free <laughs> publicity that we're giving them. <laughs> you know? um, and uh, so so part of the, the impetus for this whole thing was that at some point we want to create curriculum around this. And that was also part of the reason why we did the permeable parking, permeable, permeable pavement. Um, as you know, we have, uh, I forget the number, but it's about 60 spaces, the, 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 um, the parking that goes up against the, against the grass up here. Mm -hmm. um, that's all per, uh, permeable pavement. And uh, so the water goes right into the ground and, and it gets filtered before it goes out into, um, into the bay. And I didn't know that. Yeah. And that, uh, and that uh, prevents uh, pollutants from, so what happens when you have a parking lot and you, and you park cars, you know, your cars leak oil and, and, and all kinds of other things. And that, when it rains, it just washes off into the, into the tributaries. Into the, and so that ends up in the bay, and the bay ends up getting polluted, and so on and so forth. Uh, so there's an effort to try to clean up um, Great Bay, and one of the ways to do that is through doing these kinds of things, like permeable pavement that allows the rain to go right into the ground, and uh, and gets filtered once it goes into the ground and, and the pollutants get washed out. Um, so if you if you uh, on a day when it's raining or yes, especially on a day when it's raining, you'll know that that's dry. The water does not puddle there. The water goes filters right through. Uh, so that's another effort in our in, in our um, thinking about okay, we we need to move down this path of being good stewards and, and uh, trying to clean up the environment as much as we can, uh, trying to use less energy, and hopefully, ultimately, out of this, we'll, we'll have some curriculum and, and, a, and a program in uh, uh, energy, we, we don't know what it is yet, but technology. It was an economics course that they were teaching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's the end goal. Of course, all of these things cost money. We have to hire faculty. We have to design curriculum. We have to find uh, a space to create some sort of a lab. And, uh, and this facility is this facility is fully occupied right now. So anything related to uh, lab-related programs, it, we have a very tough time fitting in because all the space is used up for classes or, or uh, 
existing lab programs or office space. Um, so it's a challenge. But nonetheless, we will continue to, to think about it and, and move it forward. <laughs> but it's, uh, thank you so much for, for doing that research. It's uh, very insightful and helpful. Thank you, thank you very, very much, much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.